Carolina Fishing TV, showing you how to catch more fish. We're going to do something different. Uh, we're actually going to head out the inlet. We're going to take advantage of a pretty day today. We've got about a, a five to seven mile an hour um, breeze this morning coming out of the north. Um, usually in late March, early April, we have schools of albacore that show up and are migrating down the coast. Uh, down your way, you've been targeting or getting ready to target a bunch of bonita too, aren't you? Yeah, down our way, um, we have um, Diver's Rock, which is um, a yearly magnet, um, always, ha always holds a bonita. Um, we get some, some, some schools down by Riceville Beach. Um, it's kind of hit or miss. Sometimes they stay a little longer than others, but usually it's kind of a quick shot down there. Right, and they're just starting, the, the bonita are just getting ready to start showing up for us around our area too. The albacore have already showed up, so we're going to head out this morning at a bogue inlet and probably work our way between Bogue Inlet and Beaufort Inlet looking for schools of either Albacore Bonita to work this morning. What are you tossing over here this morning, Mike? Um, I got Maria jigs tied up on a few of them, the 7 gram and the 14 gram. Um, a lot of times it seems like this time of the year they're hitting small stuff on the surface, so I'm trying to mim mimic that. Um, see how it goes from there. I got, another, I got a top water tied on somewhere. Hopefully we get to that today too. Yeah, we got a few different top water baits we're going to toss today. You've got what, a banana boat there? Yeah, that's um, Yozori. Yozori? Yep, and um, yeah, I think we're going to find them. We've got a few other things you'll see throughout the day. We're going to be tossing just I mean, some pretty standard stuff, some quarter to half ounce jig heads with uh, different types of uh, glass minnow imitations on them, top water bait. So we're ready to go. So uh, stay tuned for some hopefully some good action aboard Carolina Fishing TV. Captain Mike Pedersen, myself, Captain Jeff Crump, looking for Albacore and a bogey one. We've got, uh, you know, it'll be from a half a dozen to a hundred or more birds, sometimes more than that and they'll be hovering, almost, uh, almost playing leapfrog, going over each other's backs, hovering just a couple of feet off the water and pecking down, and that's them following those uh, albacore. Yep. Yeah. There's more up ahead. We've definitely got some here we can work. Oh, oh right by the boat. Here we go. That went on, sweet, good job. These fish are scouring real hard. You can tell the fish are looking for bait. So these fish right here, you toss, you get something right in front of that school, and a lot of times he's on. He's going, isn't he? Yeah, he is. <laughs> They'll range anywhere from just you know three or four or five pounds on up to about 15 pounds. In the fall, we seem to get a lot of the bigger fish in right here. <laughs> right here, they're usually about four to eight pounds, somewhere in there. Fast as heck. Here he is. That's the color. Here he comes. No need to gaff them. You can net them or, or you can grab them right by the fork of the tail. Yeah, the tail makes a nice little handle. Yeah. Nice spicy fish. All right, let's pick up a couple more. Good job, good job. We've had 20 to 20 to 30 mile an hour southwest winds for the last three days prior today. So a water along the beach, real close to the surf zone, where we found these fish about three, four days ago, is real muddy, real murky. And um, with those southwest winds, a lot of times the fish will push back off the beach. So we basically ran 25 miles of beach within a mile of the beach, scouring real hard this morning, going uh, to the east toward Beaufort. Didn't see anything up there, and um, we turned back around, got about four miles off the beach, found some clearer water and um, basically just you know, started scouring, crossing live bottoms and artificial reefs and stuff on the way back toward Bogue Inlet. Oh, there we go. Got one on. Oh yeah, you got one there? Yep. Sweet. So your guy's taking a walk. He's going, my drag's pretty tight too. He's trying to follow that school. He's already taken off almost 100 yards. You know, usually we get a lot, you know, half a dozen, like 50 to 60, 70 yard runs out of them. That one, he spooled me. I've got 200 yards of line on this Shimano here. What are you spooled up with today, Mike? I've I got, got 10 um, pound, I've got a 10 pound braid on. I got a um, 20 pound Daiwa Samurai, but the 20 pound Samurai is really It's super big. thin, I mean, yeah, it's, it's as thin probably, as this stuff probably, right here. Bit, probably, I do, I think it slipped out. I got him in the tail, look. That's uh -oh. why he made that 120 yard run. <laughs> <laughs> he was going. That was just wrapped. I think he might, might got a wrap. Might have wrapped around his tail. Oh yeah, he's mouth hooked, but he got tail wrapped. You, you pick one up and you're not sure between an albacore and bonita, we can talk about the patterns on the side. The biggest thing is you look at their mouth. If he's got teeth like a king mackerel, um, you're looking at a bonita. The bonita are actually really good eating. They've got a light pink colored meat, cooks up real white and tender, really good. The albacore. You know, you can eat them if you like to. <laughs> if you gonna, like to. <laughs> it's going to be a real bloody meat. Um, Very good bait, though. It's good great bait. Great strip bait. That's it. That and they're just an awesome, you know, for sports fishing, it's, it's great. There's nothing better than it. For its size, it's, it's an amazing fight, so. Little tuna. It's gone.
and those birds peeled off. You got them on there? Top water. <laughs> oh, that looks like a big fish there. That looks like a big fish. Yeah, so a lot of green when There's you went over there. a lot of green there. All right, let's show, show us what that Riley rod can do there. <laughs> Mike's got a, uh, Mike makes, actually makes his own rods. Riley Roz, this is one of them right here. He just finished up. What's this one you were talking about? What did you name this, this one? This is um, a Rain Shadow Blank. It's um, an RX-8 plus 82.3. Medium weight, a very, very fast tip. Let you cast it a mile, but it's still got the backbone you need. These things are just amazingly light. It's just incredible. It, I mean, it feels like you're holding the reel in your hand. That's it. it. Here he is. And there he goes. If somebody's want to check these rods out, or where do you, do you have a website for it? Or? Yep, www.rileyrods.com. Gotcha. Yeah, these things got um, a lot of stamina. They can, um, they don't got just one run in them. They can have two or three good runs. One more time. I didn't realize you grabbed the top water bait. <laughs> yeah, that was the top water one. All right, sweet. Hold them right there. I'll get that hook out for you. One thing about it, folks, whenever you're dealing with, and it's not just necessarily that bait, anytime you're dealing with any of these baits, top water, mirror lures, anything that's got two treble hooks on them, make sure you hold that line. Don't just reach for that, that, that hook right there because he's going to shake his head. If some slack gets in there, he can get you. So hold that line forward like that. And these things can shake. And uh, especially this time of year, a lot of bluefish show up, and nothing shakes more than bluefish at the side of the boat. So sweet. All Good right. job. Another pretty one. Another one about seven pounds or so if we're fishing them with. Um, Trouble hooks and we're, we'll take them off a lot of times and put like a 3x strong hook or something on there. Yeah, on the, on the Maria jigs, I switched them to a hardier hook. These yeah, are yeah. just barely enough to hold up. Small glass minnows. I mean, that stuff's an inch or, an inch or less. Yeah, size. that's real small. Yeah, I'm using a 7 gram Maria and I can't get much smaller than that. <laughs> but it is springtime. These fish have been making a big migration, so they are hungry. So we don't necessarily have to match the hatch out here today. They're, they're looking for something to eat, so. Yeah, my top water has got to be about 100 times the size of one of those glass minnows. Yeah, <laughs> and he started out tossing that Maria jig, and I was tossing this Yozuri, which is very similar to it. And, um, you know, those are about three inches long. And then um, we just switched over to top water baits. What do you got, a four inch? Yeah, four inch banana. I mean, Yozuri, and you get that right. It doesn't look anything like the bait that they're feeding on, but they're so hungry, they just turn and eat. It's that time of year. Right there. Oh, there he is on me. Oh, he's on me too. Oh, got him on. Yep. There we go. Double top water. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Actually, I took mine and just I grabbed the wrong rod and had that Uzuri on there, so I started skipping it across the water. <laughs> Didn't have the top water at the time. Do she do? Man, they'll change direction just so Ooh. fast. Oh, see the whole school too. Oh, yeah. by underneath them. They're running to the back of the boat. Trying to. They know, uh, if it was a redfish, I'd say he knows the power poles there, but <laughs> they know the outboards there. Now he's up top. <laughs> yeah, he's doing the same thing. Look, he's right on top again. These fish are, there's a ton of men with them there. Oh yeah, look at all of them. Not a ton, but there's a, there's a few dozen I can see circling all in with them. Come on back up here, boy. Sweet. All right, nice double header. That's it. Mine hit a little jig that time, and Mike had his on a top water bait. I thought I had my top water bait in my hand. I looked up, it was the wrong rod, but <laughs> I tossed it anyway. I just skipped it across the water. He was on it. It still worked. All right. Very Good job. Nice. Sweet stuff. One thing about it for sure, Mike was holding up a handful of what they were, what these fish were eating. And when you do catch them, you obviously grab them by the tail, and they're usually going to puke. <laughs> and they're going to plaster your boat with little tiny glass minnows that will stick to your boat and dry like super glue. <laughs> that and occasionally you get a little bit of blood here and there. So yeah, make, sure you keep, make sure you keep a, a, a mop or something on the boat, I'm telling you. Yeah, you wish be, you had. They tend to be a little bit of a bleeder too, so. Yeah. All of us, I think every one of us, no matter how long you've been fishing, your least favorite part of the day is cleaning the boat at the end of the day. <laughs> and with any of the blood that's going to get in the boat or those little glass minnows and stuff, I mean, you'll have hundreds of them plastered across your boat. It takes one second right there after you catch a fish to get those glass minnows and stuff off the deck. 15 minutes of scrubbing back at the dock. It'll take you five minutes per glass minnow to get them <laughs> off of the dock when they're, they're dry. This morning we had the dirty water conditions and we saw nothing for 25 miles. 
Um, we've come off, we actually moved out to what, about four miles off and the water got real clear. And we just stayed in that range about three or four miles off and eventually just came into flock after flock. We've got a school here in front of us, that's one, another one, two, another one. Dozen pods. Yeah, there's three, four, five. They, um, all the pods seem to be working kind of slowly toward the beach though. That's it. They're working their way in. We moved from four miles out to we're probably, what, two miles off the beach here? Yep. There he is. Oh, missed it. He's on it again. He's on it again. Come on, eat it. He's just chasing like crazy out there. There he is again. Oh, right here. <laughs> Have you ever tried to hook one? Pull him up real quick before he can dive? <laughs> he was real green right there. He was. He's right here in the boat. He's green. Go ahead. I'll hold her down. He's going. Oh, he's just cut across that water. <laughs> Pretty fish. You really need to take that uh, treble hook off in here, the way they're biting anyway, and just take it off and put a J hook like uh, Mike has on his small J hook on it. You tend to catch them yeah. in the mouth. And catch and release. Less damage the fish, the better. Just flashed under my bait. He didn't take it though. Mm. Oh, look at that, right there on top of the water. It was just suspended. Oh, look at all of them. It was oh. suspended just sitting there. We've been following these fish, folks. We went from four miles out. We're about a mile off the beach right now. And we got, you know, six or seven big flocks of birds working schools of fish here around us. I just put on basically a, uh, a white Zoom Super Fluke on a half ounce jig head. So, I mean, I know a lot of folks have got, you know, all the jig heads you can stand in your tackle box and, and some of those trout killers and zoom super flukes from trout fishing and this is a good time of year to use them up too there's that bait we we're tossing that time just a half ounce jig head it doesn't have to be a certain color i mean that green that chartreuse shows up real well in the water and then any long slender you know three to five inch uh jerk you know jerk bait soft jerk bait that happens to be a zoom super fluke there, there he goes top water there he is top water bait four inch zara spook silver and black Careful of those hooks, that's the top water. He's a little thick, isn't he? Got some girth on yeah, him. Yeah, that's a nice chubby one there. Mm. Pretty fish, he's a little bigger, seven pounds, seven and a half pounds. Yeah, now you can go eight. Game off. Got one on top water bait right there. Oh, that was sweet, wasn't it? <laughs> this is it, this is it. April is the time, folks. North Carolina's definitely got some world-class fishing for albacore, light tackle. It's the perfect time of the year. It's not too hot. It's not too cold. These fish have just migrated here. It is on fire. They're willing to eat. You find a school, and they eat. <laughs> they don't give up. <laughs> Look at this one. It will not turn. I tighten the drag down, try to turn them. I believe you got the biggest one of the morning so far there, Mike. Yeah, he's that's pretty nice. Pretty fish, pretty fish. There we go. That's top water also. Man, I got a small one. <laughs> <laughs> I got a six pounder, he popped a nine. That's another fat Woo. one, good God. There's another one nine to 10 pounds, nine pounds at least. I just got decided he wasn't quite ready. No, he's he's ten. He's over ten pounds. That one. Yeah, this might this one might break ten pounds. All right, so Riley Rods. Why'd you name him Riley Rods? Uh, my wife and I's first dog when we got married a long time ago was Riley, Black Lab Riley, and um, I don't know. He was just he was one of those special dogs. I mean, we've had a lot of dogs, but there's always one that sticks out, and that was him. How long ago did you start making these rods? I mean, I've been doing it for a while now. Um, I've been making rods since I was about. 15, but I, really? I got into it seriously as a business about five years ago. And Whoa, man, that's a pig there. <laughs> now, if this was a redfish tournament, you right uh, about now you go overslide. Oh, I probably, probably would have cut him looser, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's a monster there. For this school of fish, we've been, these schools are Yeah, the first um, 10 fish or so will cut to seven pounders. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Yeah, Watch that's a whole horse. Lot. Oh, he's killing my hand. <laughs> <laughs> Stop, buddy. You got a horse there. <sighs> nice one. Sweet, man. He's a pig. Good job. He's sitting there on yeah, 10 pounds. See, they're, they're sucking those on um, top 40 down there. There he is. 
First cast on them. Rod, you got there, you said? Whoa. This is, um, I've been working with Gary Loomis's new company, um, North Fork Composites, out of Washington State. They're producing some beautiful blanks, um, all, and with, um, all made in America, all produced it there in Washington. And um, this is a field sample he sent me. Actually, this is one he sent me about a month ago. Whoa! <laughs> so, um, Gary and I started in November trying to come up with just the rod that I'm looking for. Uh -huh. And we've been back and forth. This is the fourth model, and we're getting close. Mm. Too fast. Can't go much deeper. It's only 50, 60 feet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know now. We're, we're down here where we're at. There's a couple of holes where some, uh, some dredge boats years ago uh, sat in one spot too long and dug out some holes about 15, 20 foot deeper than the surrounding water. A couple hundred yards long. It's kind of a fat one too, and a little bigger than that stuff that was out there. Earlier. Yeah, definitely a little, little bigger fish eight, down eight, by the beach eight, here. Eight, eight, eight pounder there. Turn them up here. There you go. Yeah. Now that one hit. What well, Maria jig again? Yeah. Maria back jig. Over. There he is. Look at the boat right there. Oh, <laughs> I got the wrong rod. I've got one of your rods. <laughs> He flung that bait, he, he rubber banded, rubber band effect shot it past me. I grabbed a rod, I tossed it, I'm like, something feels different. Oh, oh tried to pull it away, couldn't. <laughs> man, this thing is so light, man. This rod is incredible. Yeah, that, that rod reeled together weighed eight ounces. God, this is crazy. You don't even understand. You can hold this thing all, all day long. There he is. I see it's in color. I picked up one of Mike's rods that time. I accidentally picked it up at first, but after I felt it, I had to pick it up the second time. This thing is so light, I swear that that rod doesn't feel much heavier than that, that bait we're tossing. It's crazy. <laughs> Micro guides is what you guys are going to see more of, as because um, because the guides everybody's been using is what, what was made for monofilament, you know, right. for all time. Now right. that everybody that a braid's taking hold. Right. What happens guides. a lot of times with the larger guides, um, yep. you know, they get wrapped around. And you just get the less you let the braid do anything, the less you get wind knots and wind knots. Yep. Look right there. Look right here behind the boat. Oh, hit that top water bait. Is that you? Yeah, I tried to pull it away. Hey. Didn't pull fast enough. I'm right. There we go. You're good. I'm down deep. He's just going. Yeah. He's. Not, <laughs> he just took about eight turns left and right off the bow. <laughs> Oh, you weren't supposed to eat it. <laughs> you can't, they're, they're too fast, man. You just, it's hard to keep them away from them. There he is, going on there. Mine's following yours right now. He's trying to get around them. There we go. There he goes. He's turned. That water's still nice and cool, man. They just won't quit, you know? It's not like in the fall. A lot of times in the fall, we get on the same size fish in the fall. Oh, yeah, and they give up pretty water. quick. They yeah. got ener they got energy all day long. There he is. Got a oh. tail. Good shot. Good shot. Whew, man, it's been an awesome morning. Got a few scars on that jig. My wife wanted <laughs> me to go to the Azalea Festival. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Mike, I appreciate you coming down to Swansburg today to fish with us. Thanks for having me, Jeff. Um, you know, this, folks, this is an amazing fishery. It's just, um, we, the numbers are there, you know, the, the, the size is there, the, the, the fish is just, uh, they provide an, just a, a great opportunity for light tackle. www.rileyrods.com. Um, we feature mostly um, redfish rods and deep jigging rods, but um, every rod I used today was a redfish rod, and they, were, they work pretty well for the albacore, too. Yeah, it was, uh, they're amazingly light, it's just incredible. Those micro guides you have on there, those tiny guides are really good too. We didn't uh, cast them those all day. I don't think one time we had, uh, you know, had a situation where the line wraps around the, uh, the guides, and that happens quite often with braided line with different types of rods. So, great day today. Yeah. You know, again, I appreciate you coming out. Uh, make sure you uh, check out on Carolina Fishing TV on our website. Uh, Mike Patterson is one of the uh, North Carolina preferred guides on the program. Uh, he works with us, helps us a lot, provides information for down south. We'll be probably doing a trip down there with him this summer too. So. So again, appreciate it. Great day today. Great for having me, Jeff. Um, yeah, definitely fun.